The tale of two billionaires, Michael Bloomberg and President Trump, and the very different ways they're treated by the media. Bloomberg is all of the things that Donald Trump has tried to make himself. Trump puts out in the world is that he's a very successful businessman. And lo and behold, the person who's actually done all those things is Michael Bloomberg. A recent New York Times piece said this about Bloomberg's successful bid for mayor. Allies see his first mayoral run as proof of concept. It was a, the race that demonstrated that an inelegant campaigner with bottomless resources, party agnosticism, and a heap of political baggage could prevail. Well, meanwhile, in 2015, the paper's editorial board wrote this about then-candidate Donald Trump. Go ahead, deplore Donald Trump, despise his message, reject his appeals to exclusion and hatred, but do not make the mistake of treating him as a solitary phenomenon, a singular celebrity narcissist who has somehow all alone brought his party and his politics to the brink of fascism. Here to react, <laughs> media reporter for The Hill and radio talk show host Joe Concha. That's a long way of explaining. So one guy's a fascist, one guy's a billionaire with mm -hmm. a heart. It's funny because they said deplore Donald Trump. Maybe that's where Hillary Clinton got that whole idea from, right, Ed? The seeds of, of uh, the deplorable. Yeah, perhaps. Uh, look, last month, Bloomberg News declared that they would not cover Michael Bloomberg, mm -hmm. investigate him in any capacity or his Democratic rivals. And then you think they'd also say, we also won't investigate President Trump. Oh, no. No, the if, opposite. If you have a dossier handy or any oppo research, they will gladly take it. The New York Times did not in any way criticize Bloomberg News. In fact, criticized President Trump for criticizing Bloomberg over that. Also, this was a 2,800-word piece in the New York Times, which was really more mm -hmm. of a campaign ad if you read it. They didn't even endorse Michael Bloomberg in 2001 when he ran for mayor here, very mm -hmm. interestingly. But this is how they look back in his campaign. Let me read this quote. Mr. Bloomberg, unfamiliar with most neighborhoods outside of Manhattan, seemed to enjoy getting acquainted. He, re <laughs> he remarked that the quieter corners of New York reminded him of his native Med Medford, Massachusetts. He called his mother every day with updates on his whereabouts. Mom, here I am in Brooklyn, and gamely stepped behind the grill to flip sausages at block parties, his <laughs> polo shirt tucked in. Really putting the softer side on things but yeah. every time they talk about President Trump it's a much different tone Oh, completely. And, and they go right to fascism. They go right to that hyperbole that the minute you use words like that, fascism, or you evoke Hitler or Nazism. If I'm a reader, I'm objective, I'm just independent, that I don't follow the news terribly closely, sure. I turn it off because I don't read anything else at that point. And look, the New York Times, you probably know this, Ed, has not endorsed a Republican for president <laughs> in more than 60 years. That means they endorsed McGovern over Nixon, <laughs> Carter over Reagan, Dukakis over Bush Sr. So we sure. know where they're coming from right. at this Point. And then what about the fact that, you know, when you go back to 2016, it was all about, well, is Donald Trump going to spend all his money to win the White House? When Michael Bloomberg wants to do that, well, he wants mm -hmm. to, you know, help with gun control and climate change and all these issues they agree with him on. It's for good things. Right. Ed, right. When President like Trump when he spends the them. Virginia legislature, for example, he yeah. did it for the right reasons in the eyes of the New York Times editorial. And Trump is doing it only for deeds of evil. <laughs> but I don't think the president needs to really worry about having the backing of traditional media. Yeah. In 2016, two newspapers endorsed him out of 59. And that got Hillary Clinton a concession speech and I think a year's worth of rice -roni, like the consolation <laughs> prize. So, so do newspaper editorial endorsements really matter anymore in this no, environment? I think they work actually against perhaps yeah. the candidate. And the bottom line is that if you look at the president's polls now, overwhelming negative coverage, particularly around yeah. impeachment, and somehow his polls go in the opposite direction. Why is that, Ed? Because they don't trust the messenger anymore. Interesting. Joe Concha, we appreciate you coming in. Thanks, Ed. Insight.